Welcome to another episode of Cyber Secrets. Now the fun begins. This is assuming iTunes is installed and somebody has already backed up their phone using the iTunes and it is unencrypted. So the folder of least on Vista and higher is going to be in the app data, roaming, Apple computer, mobile sync, and backup folder. As you can see there's five different phones that have been synced on this specific account and we're going to take a look at a couple of them. You go down to the very bottom and scroll down to the info list, you can actually see the name of the phone. And if you take a look at what looks like random naming conventions, those are actually SHA hashes. So we're going to look at this list. This one right here says the IE users phone. I'm actually going to look at a different one. So let's go ahead and go back a folder, go up one more. We're going to be looking for a hacker case. And it looks like hacker's phone. This is the one we want. As in any forensic investigation, you never want to work on the original. So what we're going to do is make a copy of this folder and put it directly on the desktop or somewhere easy to find. In a real investigation, you would probably put this onto either an off-site folder or some sort of external hard drive. So we're going to name this hacker phone or hacker iPhone, or if I learn how to spell correctly. It's P-H-O-N-E. Now we have the folder or the copy or slash backup that we're going to be playing with. Now we're going to go into iPhone Analyzer. This is a free tool and it's actually really good for certain things. So we're going to open up a specific folder, point to the desktop, and point to that specific hacker iPhone. Once it brings it in, You'll notice it gets a lot of good information related to that backup, such as the ID of the phone and other items. On the bottom left hand side, it's actually bringing in images from the phone. This will include pictures taken, uh, potentially even MOV files, and cache information from Safari. So now, if you look in the mid side, you see what version of iTunes was created, you see the unique identifier for the phone. You also see the version of what's running on this specific phone. Scroll down a little bit more, see a little bit more information, and again you see a lot of good content. On the right hand side, you actually get to see other information related to the uh, backup as well, such as the computer that the backup was taken from. This can also be used for forensic value because if you take that specific folder from a specific suspect system, you can prove that it wasn't connected directly to yours. For example, you took it directly from the suspect's hard drive through a bitstream copy, copied it over from that hard drive, and again now you're working on the copy. So a couple things that I really do like about this specific application. It already has some bookmarks pre-set up. This all media is great because it gives a pretty good representation of what they were doing. It lists all of the pictures within the camera area, or the camera roll, and it also gives you pictures of screenshots from Safari. So it encapsulates everything that you want or everything that you need. The concepts area is another really interesting option. For example, it'll give you the call, uh, graphics, messages, and then it'll try to determine where the phone was at that point. For example, the screen that hasn't quite popped up yet is a map. And that little red area is where all the pictures, all the text, and all the calls were taken. Look at the very bottom portion, you can actually see some longitude coordinates. So once the screen finally does pop up, you'll be able to see where on the map the pictures were taken. This is great for finding geographic locations of where the suspect was. And it also shows the timestamps. Okay, as far as calls, again, 
It shows the calls, how long they lasted, where they were from, and what the timestamps were. This again is great information through forensic activity. Messaging, same thing. It'll show who, where, and when the messages were sent. And it also shows the content of the messages, which again is good for forensic evaluations. So you can see several different suspects. On that last one, there was no message, it was a draft. Now we're going to look in the address book. Once we click on address book, we see that there's one specific username. And with that one, you can see the modified and created timestamps. So again, just like a regular file, the created timestamp was when it was created, the modified last time it was updated. This has a lot of good forensic value. Another feature that I like about this program is the ability to export all data. When you export the data, you can actually use third-party utilities to validate the data. For example, if you wanted to look more into the JPEG files, you can look directly at the EXIF information and things in that area. So what we're going to do is add another folder on the desktop and then export all the content into that folder. This does take a little bit of time, depending on how much data is actually stored in the backup file. For example, if they have 10,000 pictures on their device, it's going to take a while to copy all those 10,000 items directly into the folder. So right now we're going to go into the media, DCM, and then the Apple folder, and these specific pictures are what were taken during the camera roll. Again, we always like to verify findings. So we're opening back up the iPhone analyzer and just comparing the pictures that you see in the iPhone analyzer with all the content in the export. So again, within the export, those are the pictures that were taken with that camera. Uh, other pictures, the extra pictures you see on top, are in other areas, such as screenshots of web pages and then also minor screenshots of chats. And again, we're verifying just in that single folder, and we should see all the same pictures as we did in the previous. But as you notice, you are missing some of those other screens or some of those other graphics. Another free iPhone forensics tool that I like is called iPhone Backup Analyzer 2 or IPBA2. This one has some extra features. So we're going to go and open that archive for that backup that we just copied over previously, the same one that we're looking with iPhone Analyzer. Once we open it up, you'll see some slight differences. Let's go to the iPhone folder, and it automatically packs up or uh, shows you the backup information of the phone, such as serial number, IMEI, product ID, and some other good information related to that case. Not quite as much as we saw before, but we can go to that area manually. And it also allows us to look directly at each one of the subcarbed items. And if you look in the top right hand side, it'll even show you modified, accessed, and creation time. Again, timestamp analysis is extremely valuable in computer forensics. If it's been modified after the acquisition has occurred, somebody screwed up. Now, if we go up to the top and see plugins, every once in a while you get some plugins that do fail on you. But what I love about these plugins is that uh, when they do work, they give you a lot of good content with easy to read. For example, these thumbnails. I'm going to maximize this window, and it gives you some information related to each one of the thumbnails, and it's going to show you the same things that we saw in the other one, plus some extra graphics. These extra graphics were actually wallpapers that were pushed over through iTunes in a secondary folder. And then you also see some black thumbnails, and those specifically were video thumbnails. Now, we're going to go into the message history, or sorry, the Safari history. So in Safari history, it's going to give you, again, an activity of their browsing history on the internet. And it does a lot of good detail, again, with timestamps and the sites they went to. So now we're going to go down to, again, another area in Safari. And this is the cool part, is these are the screens that were saved on every page that was left open on Safari. For example, if Safari crashed, you go back. These are screenshots of the web pages that you were already at. So it doesn't have to download those uh, pictures of the content again until you actually request it. 
So for example, in this case, this would be an intellectual property theft case. Uh, they went to Easy TV. Uh, let's look at some of the torrent um, history that they were at. Uh, this one, they went to look at Homeland. They went to look at Blacklist, uh, a specific episode of Blacklist. So again, it does give you a lot of good information related to that specific website as well. But the thing I love about it is the last page that they went to, that's what it snapshots. So again, going just like on the other utility, went into the media and into the uh, camera roll area and just taking a look at the pictures. And as you can see, the modified axis creation timestamps. And this specific picture is actually a screenshot or a screenshot of the phone. Now, here's another cool part about if you know exactly where to go. This specific backup has an iBooks backup. So what we're going to do is go into the iTunes backup library. We're going to double click on the library, open it up in the SQL, open the book info. Once we're in book info, we're going to look for the names of the books that they downloaded. So you see the physical location on the phone. If you were to uh, carve those out from the physical phone, and scrolling over, now we see the book titles. Beginner's Guide to the Internet Underground, Nmap Cheat Sheet, Wi-Fi Hacking. So it does this is going to be basically their library, or the visible library that you'll see if you're specifically on that phone. The thing to remember about computer forensic software and phone forensic software is all they are are string search utilities. They're looking for headers, footers, they're looking for specific things to carve out and give it to you in a readable format. The problem is, none of the tools act exactly the same. This goes for, for example, FTK, NCASE, uh, Parabens, P2 Commander. Uh, they will all give you different results, which can be frustrating at times, especially because this is supposed to be a forensic science. The more tools that you use, the better it's going to be. That's what it comes down to, is those with the most tools wins. As you saw in those previous tools, each tool did come up with a little bit different way that it presented the material, and it also came up with different results. So the more tools you use, the more results you get. You're going to validate each tool based off of the information the other tools give you. If you only have one tool, just be aware that you're more likely to miss things, and that could cause a problem. The Cyber Secrets web series covers computer forensics, hacking, and everything in between. Thank you for your continued support of Cyber Secrets. With the reboot of the different series, we want to ask if you have ideas for future content or suggestions for improvement. Please let us know. Click subscribe for new episodes of Cyber Secrets.